All right, so uh, this video is eventually going to end up in the middle of the playlist, but I want to talk a little bit about uh, prefabricating buildings for um, uh, off-grid stuff. I'm testing my off-grid uh, tool system and trailer and everything right now uh, as I get this stuff going. Um, I basically I kind of got Shanghai by corporate America, um, got hired for a a reasonably decent job that forces me to work nights so I, I get days off but that's only when I, I'm having sleep issues and so I'm not able to get to the survival retreat place and I uh, but I wanted to get my cabin built this summer and which probably isn't gonna happen but I decided to go ahead and start prefabricating pieces one of the more time-consuming elements of that is roof trusses uh, you can see here this is a, a barn roof type of uh, arrangement uh, I think what they call a gable roof the way I'm building this thing the loft is going to be almost a full height ceiling so what I need to do though is I need to salvage as much height as I can out of this thing where the gussets won't get in the way of headroom and the way I'm building this is it's basically I'm counting it as four feet we take a 4 by 8 sheet of plywood, measure in one foot, uh, measure in one foot to right here, uh, draw a line to the opposite corner, cut that off. This becomes our angle, roughly a 15 degree angle. Um, what happens here is I take those triangle pieces and they're going to attach to the top. But I built, I, I I matched that angle, uh, 15 degree angle, on some uh, board. I cut it, and then um, actually, I think this becomes a 30 degree angle. This 15 degree angle and 30 degree angles. This is a 30 degree angle on the little miter saw. I uh, I match that angle, and I uh, I make a, 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 a basically our our first piece that goes along the rim of this I cut another piece that goes along here it's all screwed and glued to the board and then I had another piece going across basically to cover up this line here and some reinforcement here now once I have those I make two of them and those become the ends of the roof and then I have to make um, the uh, um, uh, the, the the other framing for this, um, oh, what's a, uh, not rafters, it's a, you know, the roof pieces. So basically what I'm doing here though is I end up with a weak link right here and what I make are these boomerang, uh, I call them the boomerangs, it's basically uh, what would serve as a gusset on the uh, truss, yeah that's right, truss construction. Uh, what would serve as a gusset now I could make these out of metal but what I'm doing is I'm taking uh, two by six I'm cutting it down uh, and I'm making these and each truss gets two of them and that gets glued in and glued and screwed or glued and nailed now that was one of my prototypes where I was using a two by four but the idea is to make up for this little thing right here and have a continuous piece going across that way We've got snow load or downward pressure. It's just not going to split these apart. There, there are people that think they're going to get away with running some screws in like this or toe nailing it. That type of construction means that you're obligated to have some sort of a tie piece that goes straight across. You're, you're obligated to have a tie piece that goes straight across to keep those from spreading. By cutting the boomerang, what I call it, and putting it on each side of this, so this ends up being a pretty thick reinforced part. By cutting a boomerang and putting a boomerang on each side of that, uh, this one is compounded up with glue, but I still have the structural integrity at the center, which is what matters. But by having a boomerang on each side of that, these things end up being pretty strong. So there's no, there's no support getting into my open space, but when I pick up one corner of this, the other corner moves almost right away that means that I'm not flexing at the joints and then over here I'm also sandwiching it gluing and nailing or gluing and screwing 
after a while I just got the gluing and nailing and so we're sandwiching this to make up for any gaps a lot of glue in there that's to reinforce these trusses with basically a lot of wood that also gives me a lot to nail to when I when I sheathe the roof now this is eventually just going to get probably on Dora roof but um, this is how I'm making the, the the trusses without having just a cross beam going across the middle that just kills the headroom in the loft uh, it, but basically what it means is you've got to really reinforce the shit out of these corners uh, I would almost want to do a boomerang piece here, but what's going to happen is I'm going to be running some reinforcements uh, here. These are basically spacer blocks with what will become the horizontal reinforcements. The other thing is just to make sure I'm not fucking up measurements and angles uh, and having to remeasure every single truss as I go is I build them on a table on top of each other. It's just a table set up with sawhorses here but I make them on top of each other and as long as they end up you know lining up as I build them and I and I make sure it doesn't shift around on me sometimes I gotta move it to screw or nail something as long as I build these on a stack I know they're gonna be similar enough that when I go to set them up I, I can use them that way okay so that's that's one of the secrets of building trusses is you set your saw horses up you build them in a stack and that way you can look at all your corners and lines on your stack and yeah a couple of them when I go to nail them in I, I gotta force a little bit one way or the other but by building them in a stack like this I know that I'm maintaining a lot of consistency like these are my spacers for what will be the cross braces so as long as they're you know roughly 16 inches apart I, I'm going to do something around here as a cross brace but I'm still a little under 16 inches from short point to the point here over here I've got room one of these I, I might have to take an angle off of uh, I'll feed one through the table saw and probably take an angle off of that but I, I it may not be all that necessary you know but I may take an angle off of that off of the corner on that when I feed that through a table saw uh, or I may do something like this and then use little L brackets in there the idea though I, I want to be able to have a corner and I and and you know have a corner here take an angle off of the table saw have a corner that my two pieces of uh, um, sheathing are going to be able to attach to so I've got to match an angle on that but the big thing right now is building the trusses and using these boomerang shaped pieces to reinforce the weak link on a gable style roof without having a cross brace that's going to take away headroom.